Hello, my crafty friends and creatives from around the world. Today, we're making journaling cards and tags using a very simple formula. Use up your scraps and let's get creative. Thanks for joining me in the studio today. All right, so there's um, a couple of things. I cut some coffee dyed paper and that is in, I have some bigger ones and then I just have a few smaller ones. I have a really tall one, so we can do one of those. But if you don't have that, you can use, and we will use this cereal box. I These are to me some of the best um, pieces for making, um, journaling cards with because you can back the other side. This side is plain, so you don't have to back it if you don't want to. You can definitely journal on it. Um, so it's already kind of, you know, ready to go. It's a time saver. I'm just going to cut some of this off while... while you watch. <laughs> um... Let's go to bell and there's so much right I mean if your family eats a lot of cereal you have unlimited well not unlimited but you know what I mean a plethora of like this lightweight chipboard and we're recycling so it's not going in a dump somewhere or whatever whatever post-consumer recycled products. We're turning it into something very pretty and then um, it gives us a good sturdy base, which I love. So use up, you know, macaroni boxes, cereal box. I mean, everything comes in these cardboard boxes. I used a butter container the other day to make a butterfly that was pretty sturdy. So. You can usually get, um, you know, a lot of stuff that you're normally throwing in the trash and use it in your journals or other paper crafts. I mean, we could use it in all sorts of things, honestly. All right, let me cut a couple more of these and then we'll move along. I know you know how to cut cardboard by now. You can cut these with your scissor too. I just find this to be a lot easier. It's my personal opinion. So you do you. All right. So that's that. So we have a bunch of, uh, a bunch of material to work with. And then here's the key. So I found that the rule of four, four pieces. So a back piece, two other back pieces, your focus piece, and then whatever you want to put on top. But, um, not including your base, four pieces seems to be a good number. Of course, you can go crazy with this. Um, you can do all sorts of different um, things and you can do less, right? So this, this one here, it was actually done for me. Um, I think this was Graphics Fairy um, and it was a journal page that was already done. So one, two, three, these were all in place already. I just put it on here, but you could see how like even just two pieces, if this were to be pieces that you cut out, works perfectly fine too. And then you can just put an accent piece or two uh, to kind of do that. So that's the rule. And the size of the papers, it truly doesn't matter because you just want to make well it does matter a little you want to make it smaller than your base piece because obviously you want it to be seen um you can go over the edge i haven't tried that yet so maybe that is something you can try but you want to mix so you want a mix of some patterned paper some like music sheets or book page and then some solid colors so if you have anything that's more of um, a solid color and you want to try to stay in the same color families, that's the general rule. Now, obviously, I'm not going to tell you what to do. <laughs> you do what you want to do. You want to mix and match colors and make it crazy, then by all means, go ahead. 
Um, I am just going to kind of stay in a, a single kind of palette and my palettes are always very neutral and earth toned and grungy looking so that's my style but you do you and you can also add in some washi some stickers you know all sorts of stuff uh stitching and things like that so let's get one done here um no rhyme or reason. Let's see how quick we can do this. So I, I want to cut a piece of this off that is smaller than my tag. And I'm just going to tear it with my ruler for simplicity. So we have this. And then I'm going to take a piece of this green. And then this is a cardstock, so... It's a little bit heavier weight, which is good. It just bulks it up and gives more um, more sturdiness to your card. And what I like to do is just kind of tilt them a little, right? Because that's where it's bringing some interest is just tilt them a little. Um, I have some of this pad on my desk, so maybe some of this will work. like so. So that's three. And then we need our accent piece and I have a bunch of stuff. So maybe there's some green and the whites in this one and we can just kind of ta-da. Now it's, you know, you can adjust these and you can tack them down, um, you know, with a glue stick if you want you can you know do all sorts of things to kind of play with them and make them the way that you want them i might want to uh keep that one more in line with that but then maybe bring this in in, in behind try it in a couple of places see what you like see what works i think i'm back to where i started <laughs> But yeah, and so that's really it. And then by the time you add a word or something, you are, um, it's super quick and you're building up this interest visually for the eye, but yeah, it doesn't take a lot of time. And if you kind of get a vibe that you like, like you, you kind of find that, oh, this size works better with like a thinner piece. Uh, you can cut a bunch of them ahead of time and ink them ahead of time, which I'm thinking you wish I did for you, <laughs> but um, if you ink. And then this way, all you have to do is assemble. So you can do this like a little assembly line. You can do all the pieces first and get them all ready um, in, in very similar sizes. Um, and then just start mass making because you know, that's the key here is to kind of mass make a bunch of these that you can then have in your journals or for your journals uh, if you make a lot of journals. And to me, this just makes sense because we are always kind of looking for something and you can do a lot of different themes. So you'll see here, I have, you know, I have some floral, I have some angels or, um, sorry, fairies for my fairy journals and I have some just some you know alternate type of images and things like that you could use like old photographs whatever it is and then if you don't know what your focal point will be you can kind of leave that top piece off and just do kind of some bases I suppose um, and then just go ahead and, you know, add on a focal point when you get to that. But let's see, go back to what I had here. Maybe this, maybe this. And I want that up a little more. Bring this one down. And there, and I like that it's kind of 
all over the place, you know, like your angles, because it really lends itself to like the interest of the viewer, whoever is looking at it. There's a lot to look at and a lot of thought. So let me do this and see if I can glue these down. I'm going to use some PVA glue. And if this doesn't hold well, I'll go back to the Aliens Tacky Glue, which is thicker. So it kind of holds down on this wonky um, coffee dyed cardstock, which is, you know, a little, it's got ridges. And I've ironed some of them. I'm not sure if I did this one, but even if you iron them, it is not perfect. Uh, there you go. Let's get this to stick. Let's give it a second. Okay, that seems to take. And then, let's see. That, yeah. Let's put you there. And I'll probably take off some of it because I'm not going to see all that. Save that for another one. And um, hope everybody's having a good day. It is Tuesday here, but you'll be seeing this on Wednesday. Still working on my fairy journals. Those are going to be an ongoing theme throughout the year. And if you love fairies and you want to make your own, go ahead and check out that playlist in my playlists. Uh, they are super fun and I'm only on January, but I can see uh, it's going to be a, a fun, interesting series. And the thing with doing a series of journals is you get to, you can, you know, you can do them all the same, obviously, but you can also try different techniques as you go. So as I see new interesting stuff, which most of us, you know, we're on YouTube and we're looking at other videos and, oh, I want to try that. Well, you know, when you do a series of journals, you get to do that. So that's fun. And then I'm going to put that one. That's too much, like just a little off. And put it down. there and I can even overhang that if I wanted to off the edge you could try doing um some you can add some depth by trying if you ink uh trying different inks like a darker one and a lighter ink on the outside when we you know age things with our inks and then that will give it some depth also and then we just add a tag or a tab if you want you don't have to um i'm gonna round the corners but again you don't have to and then i'll just re-ink that i should have done that before i just like the way that looks and whether you want to sew or not sew is completely up to you i did one actually i did two that are faux sew. So this is sewn with the sewing machine, but this whole outside is not. It's just completely, uh, I just took a uh, Sharpie, uh, thinner one, and I just went around and then I did kind of like a uh, faux zigzag there. And this one also, this one is completely just faux stitched around the outside and then around that hope. So you don't have to stitch with the sewing machine if you don't want to, and you can still get a pretty cool stitched effect. As a matter of fact, sometimes I like the way that um, they come out when, when you do it the faux stitching because you have more control over the stitches. You know, sometimes when you're sewing on a sewing machine, depending on your sewing machine um, and the paper and the thread you're using, you get all different um, stitch lengths sometimes, or it might just not look as even. So you can do that. All right, so we got that on there. 
and then maybe we'll find a little word. And should have inked around that, but that's okay. I'll just just add in a little bit. And so because I use the, um, the coffee dyed paper now, this is already set as a journaling card. I can ink around that, but I'm gonna add a word first and I'm not gonna ink that back. I'm not gonna make you go through that. Uh, let's see, what do I got? Hopeful, how about hopeful? I like hopeful. These are pre-done. So these are from my um, words kit. And you can get this in my Etsy shop, but it's cheaper in my regular shop at heatherandyonstudio.com. They're already like backed and they already have this um, inking around them. So all you have to do is cut them out and they're ready to go. So that one might not work because of the book tag. Let me find a different one. Maybe let it go. That one might work. Just gonna ink it a little bit more. Just make it a little darker. And then we'll glue that down. And you could put a little lace under there if you wanted, or maybe a doily. Maybe the next one we'll add um, a doily to the mix. And then we'll see how that looks. Oop, no one of that way. Uh, where do we want it? How about right there? No rules. We're crafting. Like that. And look, that was super quick. It has a lot of dimension. You can continue to add little things here if you wanted to, uh, more accents, and you could stamp on it, whatever you want to do. I might add a little stamp back here. You could also add another prompt word, but since my journal prompt word is here, I'd probably just leave it like that. So we'll put that to the side like that. All right, let's take one of these cereal box backs and we'll cover this with some paper. I have some like, it was like journal paper from a kit and, but you, if you have some um, coffee dyed paper or something, you could definitely just use that. You can also just back it with plain paper or some other kind of colored cardstock. Um, if you have one sided 12 by 12 sheets, this is a good way to use up some of those if they, you know, if it makes sense for what you're doing. I'm keeping it pretty neutral so that I have a lot more options when I select what I want to put on it. So, but as always, you do what you like. Let's get all that glue in there. And then we'll cut around it and we'll have a base to work with. getting glue all over my mat yes of course all right so we have some excess glue here we'll just wait for that to dry and in the meantime let's pick out some papers um and kind of do this and this and then i have one of these so those three might work and then i need an accent piece this one has some black in it. Um, maybe this one isn't the best. So, have some of this. This might work. That is a very bright tag. Maybe something a little more subtle. Yeah, so there's a good color combo. Now this is dry enough to cut and it's starting to ripple a little. So let me just push that down and you know, you can use Mod Podge for this. You could use um, matte gel medium if you want to work that way, if you're covering these. Um, what might be easier is to just cover a bunch of them before you get started, then they'll have more dry time. And by the time you get started, uh, you'll be ready to go and you won't have to wait. But, you know, I'm showing you some options. So we'll do it on camera so you can see. 
some of the things that you can do um, with your own projects. And if, you know, if something doesn't make sense, which, you know, whatever it is, uh, ask in the comments. I can, you know, uh, or if, you, if there's something you want to see or that I haven't demonstrated fully, but you want more information on, just, yeah, leave me a note. It, it helps me to get more content out there, obviously, and it helps me to serve you better because I can give you what you're looking for, so... All right, so that's done. And now this is a taller tag, which should still fit in a journal, so like that. It'll be more of a taller tag, so you could put it like on a side and then pull it up. Or if you make larger journals, you could do that. And so with the taller ones, uh, is she even gonna fit on there? She is not, okay. Um, what else do I have? Okay, we might have to change this up a little. I have this lovely gypsy lady. And I have another one. So I could probably do two of them if I wanted to. But again, hmm. no, 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 no. I have an idea. Hold on. I have these ladies and gents oh this should be fun okay so these are lady and gent tickets and they have like those old style clothes on and maybe what i could do where's the ladies hello ladies need some ladies we can put these down and collage behind them that that would be fun And um, these are a Friday freebie, so if you're on my Friday freebie list, you will get these uh, delivered to you in Messenger or your inbox, completely up to you. Um, and now what I might want to do is just have, because we have all these accent pieces, right, I might want to add some longer strips that um, would work here. So... Let's see. I'll give you an idea of what I mean. Where did my ruler go? Oh, here you go. Okay. So, like... And I'm doing these very... Um, very crisp and clean, but you can just tear these, too, and make um, a less neat kind of layout. And then let's do this. Cut these a little different. And then we'll bring some black in because they are wearing some black there. And I was going to use it anyway. Maybe I'll do... Now this is a taller tag, so the rule of four may not apply the same here. So maybe the rule of four applies, you know in each section. So maybe this one will go this way. And like that. And then we can bring in some of this red I liked. Though there's no red in that accent piece, it's okay because as long as it matches what's going on in my journal, I'm okay with it. And so I can kind of Bring that piece there, and maybe that piece there, and kind of play around with it. But we're just cutting strips of paper, and then just kind of arranging them. And then our accent pieces, I want more black there, like that. So you can kind of tell something is there. We have a little lady here and a little man there, like that. And so now we've covered the whole layout, but yet we're still um, within that rule of four. So I have the base, but then I have one, two, three accent pieces and our um, uh, 
sorry, our base pieces. And then we have these accent pieces. Now I put five on there. You don't have to, you know, you can, maybe you have like a tall piece that would fit better in that spot and you can go ahead and do that. So I'm just going to ink these. I'll do that and speed this up so you don't have to watch. And then I'll come back and uh, we'll assemble it. All right, I'm done with that. So what did I say? I don't even know. And it doesn't matter because you can just rearrange them to your liking and go for it. Uh, maybe you go there uh, or there. And then you can go back here. I really don't think there's a wrong way to do this, to tell you the truth. I mean, it's maybe maybe in somebody's rule book, but I think that you can really all right, I'm just gonna put this down because I don't I I know that it'll work. I just know. Just do this. Hopefully we can get it close. <laughs> um but if you use this rule of the papers and the variety, which I'm sure you could go to town with, you know, we all have, you know, those tear offs and those scraps. So use up your scraps for this. Absolutely. This would be just such a, a great uh, way to kind of use all those little pieces that maybe you're not putting anywhere else. All right, you go there and then you're gonna come over here. Like so, cause I'm gonna cover you up. And get a little bit of that red peeking through. We might even cover that up, I don't know. I don't know. More black over here. one this way and I'm trying to um, also simultaneously kind of uh, alternate my angle so this one's going this way and this one is too but I kind of pulled it in a little uh, hoping that that would kind of give it a, a little bit of a different look So I had a panic attack last night. <laughs> um, I have an Epson Eco Tank printer, and I print all the time. Um, that's what I do. And so it gave me this message, like your ink pads are at the end of their service life or some kind of weird message. So I looked it up, and it said that my printer was not going to print again until I got it serviced. So, you know. I'm not taking my Epson printer to anybody to service. I'm going to figure it out. Thank you, YouTube. Um, so I found the solution, which is a little involved, but that's okay. I don't mind a little hard work if I don't have to, you know, take it to somebody and then be without my printer. So, um, you, you know, you have to take out these ink pads and put replacement pads in. It's really messy and nasty. And I'm like, oh, whatever. I had to order the ink pads. I did that. I turned my printer off. And I turned it back on and wouldn't you know, it's just printing. So <laughs> like, what the heck? So when I turned it on, um, like the first thing it did was like a paper jam or something. So I'm like, I wonder if it like mixed up its signals, you know, and it um, gave me the paper, the, the message for, you know, the ink pads, whatever. And, but, oh man, me without my printer, no. It's just, no, can't do it. All right, where are we going to put you, ladies and gents? You're going there. And this was a bad print. You see on the other side, there's... Um, I printed it one side, and for some reason, when my printer started, it printed half of it green. 
like I think you can see it. See how it's like green tinged? I don't know why it does that. Uh, every so often now when I turn it off and turn it back on, the first print will have like a green hue to it. So I'm always kind of cautious of doing that. I have to watch and not print like my best print first. <laughs> but as long as I can print on the other side, I can use it for projects like this. So you're going to go there. Such a dapper Dan. You're so dapper. All the ladies want you. All of them. All right. Enough of that. You go here. Hang you off a little to the side. And there's really no thinking here. I mean, you're just tearing paper. You can rearrange it a hundred ways to Sunday until you find something you like. And then when you do, you can just glue it down. And it's that easy. I'm done with you for a while. Maybe put you like that. And there, look at that. And that's a tall tag. So that can work in a lot of ways. And we can add, since these kind of look like, you know, those catalog, they look like they belong in a catalog. I'm gonna get some of these price tags. Uh, where are you? I know you're in here. Oh, I wonder if I use them all. <laughs> oh, well, let's see. What else could I use? Good. That's too big, maybe. Uh, oh, how about number eight? That might go good. And it kind of matches a little of the aesthetic. I might put a little black around this one because it's already got some like green and greenish brown going. So, oh, maybe right there. No, nope, I'm gonna cover up his head. Right there. And really, it's uh, it's up to you and your style. I just kind of like that it's super quick and you can use up a lot of different papers out there and you know play around and if it doesn't come out that great whatever just go over it go over it with something else i like the red contrast on these um labels on any label i don't just mean these labels like when there's like a red kind of um contrast that calls it out because i think it just i don't know it's very appealing to me maybe i was a catalog creator or a price tag creator in a past life who knows all right so that's that we'll do one more we'll do another quick one and then I'll, that'll be it and then you're on your own so that's that and i can punch a little hole in the top here uh where are you centered sort of And I'll put a little string through there. Done and done. You don't have to do anything to the back. You can do something to the back if you want. It's all good. All right, so this one's a smaller one. So we'll put you over there. And let's see, what do I have? I have, I think I want to use this. So this would look nice, I think, with that. Because it's kind of mimicking that rose. And we have, I have some of this green here um oh i have music paper maybe i'll use that yeah so that it says never a rose like you perfect nobody's gonna see that but it doesn't matter take you If 
we can get any of those words to be seen. Like so. So that's one. Let's take the pattern paper. Maybe we'll make this a little wider. And test it. You know, try a thin strip. Try thicker strips. See kind of what comes together for you. And what you like. And what is appealing to you. A little shorter. And then I need a solid kind of base color. Black. Let's add some black. Some basic black. Well, now I'm going to have to tear all the edges because, just because. Mm -hmm. Oh, why'd that one tear so nice and the other ones aren't? You can hand tear it if you want to. So I think this would be cool because it'll make this pop a little more like that. And so we have, we pulled in some of that, that lovely rose. And this would work just as well too. I could definitely interchange this and I can actually do, all right, so I'm gonna break my own rule. This is now the rule of five. <laughs> um, and we can just accent it a little. So you're gonna do something like this. Or even like that. And washi would work good here too. There. And then like that. I like that. All right. I'm going to ink and we'll be back. And we're back. All right. So we've got music paper. We've got a patterned paper. We have this black piece here. And I broke my own rule with this, with this little pink piece, which could even do that. Nope, that's gonna drive me nuts. Nope, don't like that. Okay, you're gonna go there. And then you can go like that. All right, now a quick tip, if you find an arrangement that you love and you're just like, I'm never gonna get it back there, just snap a picture with your iPhone or your Android phone or whatever you have. Um, don't do it with one of those ones that you have to take in and get, you know, developed, obviously. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so just take a picture and then you have a reference, but uh, I think we'll be okay besides. If it's a little off, it's fine. It's fine. This is very thin paper. I actually, it's actually um, like an Amazon paper. And what I did was um, I cut it. Well, I ironed it. I ironed it out. You know, they fill up the, um, and every paper is different. I don't know. Some of their packaging paper is really thick and some is thin. I don't know. I don't know how they figure it out. Um, but then I iron it and I cut it to printer size, you know, in my case, eight and a half by 11. And when I did that, I printed on it and it gives this kind of cool look. So yeah. And it's like newsprint. That's what I'm trying to think of. Newsprint. And I, I know you can buy pads of newsprint type paper, but it came in my packaging. And so I'm like, nope, I'm going to use that. And that's what I did. So it was like a big sheet and I just cut it down and then I used it in my project. All right. So since that edge tore like that, I'm going to flip this over like so. that and then I'm gonna put you 
there. I don't know that that's how I had it, but you know what? It's all good. It's really kind of hard to do these wrong. There, we'll do it that way. All right, and this one is also begging for something else. So, oh, wow, look at that. That's what I was looking for before. They're in here. Uh, like this one, which is black. I could do that. Or, um, what else? What else? Oh, we got this. Maybe this was on 114 King Street. Like that. Maybe both. Maybe red. You know, I'm just dying to use one of these. Nah, eh, that's just not gonna fit anyway, so. All right, let's go with this. Let's go with this. Oh, and when I when I ink these, um, I did the ant vintage photo, sorry, vintage photo, and then I went around, this is just like a black ink, uh, black soot, this is an oxide actually, and I edged it a little more, and then it brought that black that's here kind of in, and it gave it that burnt paper look, which I love, so... So you're going to go, I think, there. Better somewhere else. Oh, maybe there. I like that better. Oh, and I didn't do the doily. That's all right. Let's, maybe we can try one more quick one. I'll put you there. Yep, for one more. If not, just turn the video off. If you would like to stick around for one more. And stay on with me. All right, so that's a journaling card. So that one is done. I might stitch around that because I would like that look. And we'll do one more. All right, so what do we have? Uh, let's take a bigger one. And I have this doily, but it definitely needs to be on top of something else. So I have green. I have some of this green paper. Or I have this one, which is kind of like this cool pattern. Maybe I can take a piece of this off. We might have to be using black again just to kind of make it pop, but we'll see. I might get book page. Let's let's just see. Right, I'm gonna go a little wider. This is a wide card, and probably about there. Let's see. I got this screen. I have this, which I keep trying to use. I have book page. All right, let's keep going. Let's see what we get. I think we need a darker color for sure. Unless I do this on the bottom. I could do that. I could do that. completely covering up that doily. I want the darker side. Let's see how this looks. I kind of do that and have maybe this under here. just find an accent piece that might just sit on there nicely. Too small, too big rather. 
That's a possible. Oh, I have this lovely lady. That's too gray. Okay. Have this. I mean, really, any of these will work. I'm just being silly now. Oh, I didn't get to use you. Ah. Winner. All right, so the doily kind of works. I do like it. Let me see. If I pull her down here, maybe I need to, I think I need to make this one shorter. Quick, you say. Here. So we're seeing that bit of doily. Could have. Maybe we'll just do that and then I'll sew. Sew. All right. Let me ink. Be right back. All right. So. I did some sewing around this one. I added some extra accents, but this is where we were. I added um, a Tim Holtz tag from one of his tag packs, pads, things. And because I wanted to pull in some of that green, I don't know, there was something in this that was just calling out a need for more green. And it's a little bluish, but I think it works. And then um, just kind of, because I don't know, I kind of got a feeling like somebody went to a show and this was the lady that was there at the show and it was at this uh, cafe or whatever this is and this is the ticket from going and this was the doily under my drink I don't know there was a story there so I fed into that and this is what I got and I added a tab so this can um, be a journaling card and then I just sewed around it and it went a little wonky, but that's okay. I like when that happens. I left the strings and that's it. So we got a lot done in a little bit of time. You can mass make these a lot quicker. Obviously I'm showing you a tutorial, so it takes a little longer, but um, in this one we made four and that was with me showing you everything as well. And then I made all of these that you see here in like an hour so they go really quick that one's so cute and if you have papers that kind of lend themselves to this layout uh, you can cheat and <laughs> make them even faster so just some ideas there for you um, I hope that inspires you to make some of your own mass makes help things go faster so um, use up those scraps pile everything up on your desk, cut everything up, and then just go to town and make a bunch of these and then share them with me on Instagram, Heather and Yon Studio, and I will share it on my story. Thanks for stopping by and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.